Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We're joined by our panel of experts on preparedness, civil defense, martial law, and earth changes. Uh, John, of course, has his own radio show, 7 to 9 a.m. Central Standard Time on Republic Radio, Monday to Friday. He's also a former Special Forces and expert consultant on preparedness and does it for many people all over the world. Uh, Anne is a scientist, deals with a lot of issues such as earth changes, volcanism, radiation issues. She's a, pri- uh, a private consultant on issues of radiation toxicology. And uh, we talk about these issues. Uh, Alexander Bachman is uh, away today. He's up in L.A. doing a conference. But uh, we want to hear the latest from John in terms of what's happening in Ann, in terms of risk changes and also the geopolitical issues as we head toward the fiscal cliff, uh, which I think is a uh, exercise uh, I call the game of chicken. Uh, I guess the chicken is we have two wolves, the Republican wolf and the Democratic wolf, and they're both deciding what form of chicken they're going to have, which is us. So, uh, <laughs> so well, that's Dr. a different Billy, kind of game. Uh, it, it, I like your analogy. Uh, <laughs> you and I were talking privately earlier today, and, and uh, we may disagree about exactly what this fiscal economic uh, matter is going to, how it's going to ring out. But I think we all agree it's going to be a wild ride. And yeah, it will be. It'll be rough because ultimately, both uh, political groups, camps, I call two compartments of the Snake Party the Republican and the Democrat Party want to walk away politically unscathed, both raising taxes or reducing deductions and cutting entitlements while looking like they did the right thing. And that's ultimately what will happen, whether they kick the can down the road or do whatever, because they're not going to stop the bankers from printing money falsely. They're not going to actually get the real economy going and releasing all the abiotic oil and gas and coal. They're not going to uh, stop uh, with countervailing tariffs, ridiculous shipping of more factories to uh, Asia, India, and uh, Indonesia. They're not going to improve his environmental standards against, uh, you know, these smokestacks in China and these other countries that are despoiling their country. They're con- going to continue basically more of the same. And uh, I don't trust politicians. I think that uh, they must leave their brain and their common sense and their, like this ceremony they do at the Bohemian Grove, they, they literally burn their care, their conscience at the door so that they can a, behave like a, uh, a conscience-free reptilian. Uh, and that's what we have. We have a ba- bunch of evil people who present themselves as our saviors. And in fact, we have to constantly constrain these people because they lack a real portion of what it is to be a full human being. They don't have compassion for quote us which are in a sense they're our employees but we treat them like they're our kings and our queens and our royalty and uh, that's why we who are sovereigns by the way in this nation we're not subjects like in Britain we're sovereigns we continually worry about who's going to be the next uh, dictator and we have fools like Obama thinks that he's been elected as the dictator of the moment and now he has a mandate to do all kinds of horrible things to our economy our health care and our population and thinks he can get away with it. It's just ridiculous. Well, absolutely. And, of course, the 900-pound gorilla in the middle of the living room is the earth changes, which will eventually shut down uh, everything that all people are doing. Exactly. And in fact, I think that's what, the, that's what they're working against. Uh, the globalists are scrambling on a timeline they are. To, get control, to get control. And here's what I've been told from the inside uh, of the so-called inner circle. They're concerned that we, as the uh, citizens, if we get a hold of Tier 1 science and the information that you're aware of, that we will freak out and we will interfere with the, quote, survival of the global elite and their selected uh, gene stock for the reestablishment of a human civilization on this planet after the planetary collapse and the extinguishing of many life forms on the planet due to, due, uh, we call, uh, uh, we call uh, extinction-level events. Exactly. Now, I don't want to be able to set specific times, but I can tell you that the likelihood of a CME knocking go power, at least in one or another area of North America in the next two years, I'm going to put it 90%. I can't tell you how extensive it will be, but it will be very catastrophic. When you have top scientists like Dr. Mishu Kaku, when we look at the two new uh, bands of ultraviolet light that have appeared since 1992, this is not open to anybody's damned opinion. It's published in the scientific literature. If we look at the number of near space objects, and I was the civilian doctor that worked on contract with U.S. Space Command in the mid-90s, the amount of near space objects that we don't even know they're coming, and they're big damned objects, and now they classified it since May, that they don't even want the public to be aware of. This tells us we have really bad things coming, and the so-called global elite don't even know what's going on. They're freaked out too, but they don't want us to interfere with their survival, which is why they're building underground cities at great speed, and they're doing all these weird things, and you say, where are they getting the money? They're printing it. Exactly. Exactly. 
Well, all these things uh, continue to be uh, on the horizon, and those who uh, aren't aware will end up being caught off guard uh, at the worst possible moment. Well, Keeping in mind, of course, that uh, EMP is a very, very excellent uh, thing for them to make use of because they can blame it on anybody. Exactly. And, of course, they, even if they have an EMP event from the Iranians, who we're now have an act of war against the Iranian people, the Iranian people would basically, by and large, totally support an America re-establishing uh, the rule of law and, and, and down-regulating these mullahs so the mullahs could become religious entities inside the state without it being the dictators. But because we persecute these people by putting embargoes on them, we literally force them to have to live in a totalitarian regime, just like we literally have served over all the people of the Middle East to the Salafi Muslims and the Muslim Brotherhood, which are high-level Masons that are extreme Muslims. Uh, they're basically our bad dogs. And this uh, so-called ambassador wasn't really an ambassador. He was basically a functionary, a brown shirt, uh, handling the transshipment of all kinds of armaments from Libya and Tunisia uh, through to kill uh, Syrians. And now the uh, Turks have asked for, as a proxy of NATO, for more missiles so they can set up a, a functional no-fly zone along the Turkey-Syrian border, thinking that they can cause the fall of the uh, Syrian government. Well, I... I can tell you right now the Russians are going to deploy or the Chinese the S-400 system because they co-developed it and we're going to get a hell of a shock if we think we're going to go into Syria and get away with this. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it, it, w it would be a big mistake to make that move. Yeah, well what will happen is all of the real advanced missiles north of the Latani River in Lebanon that Hezbollah has as well, all the missiles inside Syria that they, that they, that Hafez al-Assad has basically said there's no way he wants to use these missiles unless his country's invaded. And now we're planning an invasion. Are we crazy or what? And if Israel gets attacked, Israel's going to let loose with everything they have, which means a nuclear war in the Middle East, a crash of the world economy, devastation of the oil fields, and uh, a, a population that will bring terrorism to our door, and we can't stop it. And I can tell you a half dozen ways, without putting it on the airwaves, of how if I was pissed off and I was an Iranian or Syrian, how I could take down millions of Americans and there's nothing they could do to stop me. Nothing. Well, that's very true. And, uh, that's what's disturbing. Is I, I'm so angry over this that our so-called State Department and Homeland Security thinks in all their wisdom they can stop really intelligent people with called a poor man's nuke and many different things, not just dirty bombs, biological weapons, scalar weapons, even just hauling a barge 100 miles off the coast and shooting up a rock at 80,000 feet and making an EMP pulse. I mean, there's so many ways to screw over our civilization that they can't stop are they crazy? They can haul in a container. They'd less test. They break the seals in less than two percent of containers coming in from Mexico, or from any port like Hutchinson Wampo running the Freeport Bahamas, largest transshipment port on the eastern seaboard, is run by the People's Republic and Army of China, and they've told us in our State Department, no, you're not going to invade Syria, and the Chinese are freaked out that they're going to lose all their oil coming out of Iraq because of this regional war. They are. They are. And, and we need to be very cautious in that part of the world. Most Americans don't have a clue of what we're dealing with over there. And no, no. And they don't understand how intelligent these people are and how creative. I remember talking to uh, the engineers that were helping build the rocket launchers for the what they called the, uh, the, the missiles that Iraq was lobbying over Israel. And these were what called contained dummies. They didn't have biological or chemical weapons. Uh, the engineer came from, the guy that, that showed him how to weld these was from Norway. He went down there, and when he came back six months later, they were welding them twice as fast and with better welds than he could do, the professor that taught them. So we're asking for a really big problem, and just like the Chinese donated 52 JL-17, uh, most advanced Chinese-made jets, free to the Pakistanis, the Pakistanis have already guaranteed that they will support Iran if there's a nuclear war, and they are chock a block full of nuclear weapons absolutely it's really 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 stupid this is stupid to the nth level what we're doing right now and obama will apologize us into armageddon at the rate he's going want to hear from man when we come back about changes in the uh, levels of the missouri and, and mississippi river and how it'll affect coal fire generators What's the latest news? And then we're going to hear from Ann in terms of what's going on. These are real things that are happening right now. Ann's going to give a report on the levels of water in the Mississippi and Missouri rivers and the real battle 
over coal and coal-fired generation that's going to have almost immediate effects on the southeastern United States and the literally the industrial heartland of the country. Um, so, John, what else uh, has well, happened? I, 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 going back to our earlier part of our conversation, the economy, the economy, the economy. That's what's really in our face. Obviously, World War III is in the wings, uh, the possibility of an EMP attack, and these things we, nor- we regularly discuss. But the economy is uh, the big thing that's really the most immediate matter that people need to be aware of. They need to get uh, out of debt as, much, as, be- as best they can, have cash on hand, and be ready to deal with uh, the possibility of these EBT credit cards and uh, a bank holiday, which is a possibility, and not the highest one, but it is a possibility uh, that people need to be aware of. Exactly. And, of course, we see this amidst uh, our government pushing things like this, the Salafi Extreme Muslim Brotherhood Alliance, and now there are giant crowds in Tahrir Square. I just had a report literally from minutes ago that the uh, the all-night session of their so-called government with President Mohamed Morsi shoving this through with the participation of liberals and Christians and the anger against Morsi is spilling over to a mosque where the Islamic president joined for, uh, weekly Friday prayers the sermon the mosque preacher compared Morsi to Islam's prophet Mohammed saying the prophet had enjoyed vast powers as a leader giving a precedent for the same to happen now and that no to tyranny congregants chanted interrupting the cleric so Morsi took to the podium and told the worshippers that he too objected to the language of the sheikh that one man rule contradicts the Islam. Uh, this is getting over the top, and people don't understand if Egypt, which is right on the border of Israel, starts to lose control of its military, which is giant. It even has contracts to build the M1 Abrams tank there and jet aircraft under U.S. contract. Uh, it has billions of dollars of military support from America every year. We have that, and as you mentioned on the, on the break, why isn't Gaza just a province of uh, Jordan? Why? Why don't we have a situation where we can simply, we can simply? Uh, that would diffuse say, the whole thing. There would be, we would, have, we really would have genuine peace. Right. And then happened. we can have a tunnel or or, or, or special you know, ways of getting people from the sort of the West Bank to Jordan because it's just on the other side of the river. It's like this is easy. Uh, this is not a problem. This is something that's easy to then have proper security and then real peace there. But we don't have that. Absolutely. They don't Absolutely. want it. The, the globalists want to have a conflict there, and that's why even Netanyahu, uh, even the fact that they brought their armies right to the border and then backed off, is like all that's going to do is allow the Hamas to rearm. And when, when the next rocket attacks happen, you guarantee there will be an invasion. Then it's going to get real ugly. Absolutely. Because the Israelis invade, the, the, the Hamas literally sets these rocket launchers in schoolyards and by churches so then of course you know how many churches and hospitals and other buildings including united nations feeding centers were destroyed by israel if people knew and actually had a catalog of the videos and all the buildings and people that were killed they would just vomit they couldn't believe it that israel did this and, and we paid for it we american taxpayers are paying for it absolutely and of course we're also putting the israelis in danger because once these rockets are start to be packed with chemical or biological weapons, the Israelis are going to go crazy, and in, to some extent justifiably. It's like it's like duct taping two mortal enemies and giving them triggers for bombs on their chest, with each of them deciding who's going to push the button first. That's how crazy this is. It's it a is, guarantee it's of, of a, of a conflict. I can, you know, I'm sure if you fly into the Middle East, your airplane spiritually you can hear a tick, tick tick because the ticking time bomb of the Middle East is going to go off real soon because they want it to go off absolutely yep. so Anne what's happening in the Midwest what's the crazy policy of Obama and of course the red blue states what's happening with the rivers and the Missouri and Mississippi and what's going to happen with coal fired generators in the next few months well it looks like uh, they're predicting that barge traffic all barge traffic will be stopped on the Mississippi River December 9th, and that's uh, nine days. Now, now, most people don't realize that the majority of power in America is generated by coal, C-O-A-L, four-letter word. And if those barges don't arrive, they can't deliver that coal by rail sufficiently to keep the power all going. So in the middle of the winter, they're going to start having power blackouts in those areas of the states delivered by coal from barges along the Mississippi and Missouri rivers. That is the primary way that coal reaches our coal-fired power plants that are just across the river from St. Louis. They're on the Illinois side of the river. Yeah. And uh, um, 
Now, the, the barge traffic has been restricted since August. And so in, if normally the coal-powered fire, if the coal-fired power plants held two or three weeks of uh, supply of coal, uh, they don't have that now because the, the, the barge traffic has slowed down so much. The U.S. Coast Guard determines the barge traffic on the Mississippi. The Corps of Engineers is responsible for dredging the channel. And they're having trouble doing that um, above St. Louis, north of St. Louis on the Illinois River. Uh, so, and then the situation was made worse. The day after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, the Corps of Engineers um, uh, cut the flow of water from the Gavin Dam, which is on the border of Nebraska and Kansas, uh, to a third of what it was. Now, why would they do that? What's the, what's the rationale? It's almost like saying, well, gee, you don't have enough blood flow to your brain. How about we put our thumbs on your carotid arteries? Well, they haven't. The, the reason they've given senators, the senators is that uh, it's according to their plan. And they cannot undo their plan. And Their plan? Well, is this, are these people that have got some form of Asperger syndrome and they're very rigid, or what's their problem? Don't yeah, they realize that the barge traffic stops and it kills the river? And most people have no idea just how much money and traffic and everything goes along those barges along those major rivers. Well, the Missouri River is the largest contributor to the Mississippi River. So it's the largest tributary into the Mississippi River. And so when they cut the uh, flow down from uh, the north, from uh, Nebraska-Kansas border, then they cut the flow of the Missouri River through uh, the state of Missouri. And not only that, when they cut the flow, the, flows, the flow of the river slows down. So it, it takes longer for the water to move. And there's less water that's moving, so more of it gets evaporated into the air. And more silt so, salt then probably, too, so you get a high, faster buildup of blocking channels, right? That's true. When the, when the river slows down, it drops its load, and it's mostly carrying silt. Now, the only comment I could find was the uh, governor of of, uh, of Montana saying, said that the uh, he doesn't want he wants to keep the the, the slower flow out of uh, out of the Gavin Dam because the move is needed to protect recreation and hydropower on the river. Oh, well, okay. we we have whole <laughs> we we have a. An economy built on barge traffic that travels up and down the Mississippi. Our commodities go down the Mississippi to the port of New Orleans, and from there they go across the ocean to our foreign clients. Also, coal comes up and comes north on the Mississippi, and it supplies and it supplies both coal to our coal-fired power plants, but it also uh, supplies commodities from our foreign partners. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, I can hear it too. Things are really going to start rocking and rolling soon. Welcome back. A couple uh, stories I want to throw out. The first, of course, is that they're now debating the idea that they want to get rid of the dollar. What do you think of that? And they also are having French socialist... Uh, suggests that in the metal row, we're just doing what Obama does, which, of course, is the idea of the Indian Steel Company. Acerola Metal should leave the country, has told uh, CNBC that his government is only acting like U.S. President Barack Obama. Uh, that, uh, In other words, the, in, the industry minister, Ar Arnaud de Montembourg, member of the governing Socialist Party, caused a controversy last week when he said Indian Company, which employs close to 20,000 France, should leave after it said it would have to close down a factory. In other words, these socialists don't care. They believe in income redistribution even if it destroys the economy. Uh, the uh, tax the rich attitude of Obama defies logic. And I think, and I've seen here the reports that suggest that uh, the best thing to do for this fiscal cliff is for the Republicans to just walk away and let it happen. Uh, I don't think that there should be any more negotiations with Obama. I think they should, should uh, stop playing this brinkmanship game with Obama and just let the chips fall because what will happen is they need to get real about reducing the cost of drugs and medicines and medical care. They need to stop trying to interfere with doctors and dictate them. And you have a 
a new statement that they want doctors to ask. Uh, John, you got independent confirmation. Right, right. Uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to think I'm sitting down, so don't fall down when I heard this. But what, what do they say to these doctors? Well, these doctors under Obamacare, they're required to ask their patients in the interview, uh, do they own firearms? And uh, I've confirmed that from a, a couple different yeah. <laughs> uh, independent uh, sources. So, uh, and a thousand miles apart, by the way, actually, yeah. uh, two thousand. Well, miles my apart. answer will be, and I got an appointment for my daughter to bring her into the doctor in a few weeks just to get some papers filled out. If the doctor raises that question, I'll ask the doctor, "Doctor, do you breathe oxygen?" And uh, and then the second question, if they say, "Well, we really need to have this answer," I'll say, "Did I give you permission to ask that question, doctor?" And then my third question will be, do you have a firearm doctor in your drawer and a flak jacket on right now? <laughs> because it's stupid. I mean, why would they put doctors in a position? Do they want to make them into white coat spits nuts? Remember now, all these central uh, databases for health care go directly back to the Health and Human Services and Homeland Security. They have access. You can be in Interpol in uh, Frankfurt, Germany, flying in an airplane. You go dink, 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 on the computer, and you can pull up their medical records and know, hey, these pills aren't your pills because you don't have these medical conditions. They can right. know if you had a firearm in the past, so they're going to give you extra care to make sure you get a full body cavity search with someone with anatomically abnormally long digits. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this is just a form of abuse. This is to say, be a good little gerbil in the gerbil cage in Gerbil City. Don't shut up. Take your abuse and realize that eventually we're going to not only take your dollars, we're going to give you biometric currency, which is the stage before the mark of the beast, which means most people aren't aware of this, but most of our money already, the lower denominations, already has an RFID tagging chip. Did you know that I was told this information now ten more than ten years ago? They have guns now. They can give to state troopers and police and homeland security, and they can point these up to three to four hundred yards away and can tell how many denominations and exactly what total value you have on your person, even if you're going at seventy-five miles an hour in a vehicle down a down a tollway. Did you know that? I've heard that, Doc. Yeah, they can I hit have, you with a I pulse, and they get a they get a they get basically a scattergram pulse back. And says, "Yeah, this guy's got fourteen hundred and fifty dollars." So all the money is, is tagged as RFID cash, and that's why they're putting RFID readers everywhere. So most people think, I don't have the mark of the beast. No, you got the mark of the beast currency, though, because you got money that's tagged, and now they want to get rid of the dollar, and eventually they don't even want to have money. Forget money. They want to have your biometric. You've got to lean forward and get a retinal scan or an iris scan, put your 10 digital fingerprints. By the way, in March of next year, the iPad 4 comes out, which can recognize you from your voice print and your fingerprints on the screen, anywhere on the screen, who you are, gives you security clearance. So if your kid has security clearance for certain apps on their iPad 4, they're going to be have security clearance because it's logged in and it goes directly to a database in their so-called uh uh, you know, uh, what do they call it? What do they call it? Cyberspace cloud? <laughs> Believe it or not, people say, "No, no, Doctor Deagle, you're exaggerating." No, I'm not. You go check it out yourself. Yeah, the brave new world is upon us, isn't it? And it's not very brave. Actually, they should call it the the quivering new world rather than brave. There's, the bravery has left this. The left the stage, has out the door, and has gone down the road. Well, those who aren't prepared to deal with it will pay the consequences. They sure as heck will, and this uh, thing in, in uh, Egypt, I think you're going to see uh, you're going to see all kinds of revolutions in the Middle East. I don't think they're going to put up with this, uh, e whether it's in Libya, or Tunisia, or Egypt. These protests in Tahrir Square, they want to play it down when there's 200,000 people show up, Christians and Jews. They know that if they continue to have this kind of constitution, where basically women, and I was told this by by Walid Shubat, you know, and it repeated from previous statements I had over the last 40 years. Uh, here's the hierarchy. Men, camels, goats, sheep, chicken, woman. I mean, uh, and if you think the rights are really bad now, if you're a Jew or a Christian and you live in these countries, or if you have a daughter in, say, Cairo, one, 500 young women every day, or sorry, every week, are being uh, abducted in just Cairo alone. I'm not talking about the other cities, and are being forced to either be uh, raped forced married to Muslims, and then if they don't want them to keep in the family, or they try to go back to their family, they, they try to do a uh, honor-killing execution. And if the family tries to resist, they surround the home and try to attack the family and will torch the home down and persecute the, the Christian family because their daughter was abducted, not knowing where the hell she was. Right. That's what's going on in Egypt. And we put up with this crap. 
we need to be Joshua Christians with a sword in our hand and a fully automatic machine gun in the other. We need to stop this bullshit. Excuse my English. <laughs> You're forgiven. I, I, I'm forgiven, but I, I'll tell you, I, there's some times when I just reach my, what I call, Christian limits on what I can tolerate in terms of why we as Christians put up with this kind of crap. And we have it from our government, both sides. Now, Bonner, by the way, now knows that his neck politically is on the line unless he literally tells Obama, unless we have a reasonable compromise that doesn't do what Obama wants. Obama basically thinks, I won the game, I can have whatever I want now. America's an ATM machine, I want a credit limit, so I could always go back and never even have to talk to you about raising the debt ceiling. That's craziness, isn't it? It is absolutely insane, yes. He just needs to tell, uh, you know, uh, Bernanke, don't worry about it, just run the presses hot enough, and if they get start to get steamy or it looks like you're going to start a fire, just hose them down. <laughs> yep, yep. Damn it. <laughs> when you're doing this stuff and you say, Congress looks at doing away with the bill, what the hell are Congress, especially a lame duck Congress, discussing the dissolution of the dollar? It's because eventually they don't want you to have any currency. They want the currency to be your iris scan or your digital fingerprints. And if you disbehave and you say anything that they don't like on Facebook or Twitter or in conversations or to your doctor... They just need to all delete you, and you don't exist in cyberspace or in reality. You cannot buy or sell, save you have the mark. We're so close to this, people just, and they're delusional. They think, oh, you're just exaggerating your conspiracy theorist, Dr. Deagle. No, I actually have two clues, and they still can recognize each other. Absolutely. What, what do you think, John? I mean, don't, don't you get frustrated sometimes when you talk to people that are what I call... I call it willing, vicious ignorance. This is not just regular ignorance. This is a kind of a noxious, like the smell of death, vicious ignorance that people have nowadays. And they dare, they dare to actually act like they've actually had an intellectual clue about what's going on. And the whole country is going to hell in the handcart. And we have the re-election of a Obama through voter fraud and through manipulation. And he's just a puppet for the bankers. They're going to bankrupt the country even when we're sitting on a packet of oil that could make us the richest country on earth. They don't do any proper foreign policy, and they're going to back us into Armageddon where they, where they don't even back Israel, but restrain them as well. We don't have any Absolutely. proper foreign policy. Your comments? Well, I, I try not to get an emotional attachment to the uh, people I run into because my expectations are pretty low. And, you know, <laughs> well, mine are too, but you still, at times, you get pangs of, oh my God, what they're going to go through. I don't even want to know it. The blood, guts, and the starvation. And the problem is, we're going to have decent people two weeks after the power goes out and so on, and they're going to try to kill people or eat them because they're starving to death and they haven't had a drink in four or five days. Yep. Yep, absolutely. And people say, oh, that can't happen, you know, like uh, The Walking Dead. Excuse me, I'm an old trauma burn doctor. I've seen human beings do what other animals wouldn't do, even if they have rabies. you got to yeah, know. What humans you, are capable of is, is truly uh, remarkable. It is truly remarkable. You put them in the wrong circumstances, and they can do bad stuff. Welcome back. Um, good example of uh, crazy foreign policy, and this goes multiple administrations, both Republic crap and Democrat. Uh, satellite photos showing North Korea rocket preparations raised speculation. We gave the technology, in fact, even up to the end of the second term of, of George Bush, Jr., they were giving information on uh, nuclear technology to the North Koreans, even during the time that Dick Cheney, the, the, you know, the son of darkness, was there as a real puppeteer of the presidency. I mean, people don't understand just how nuts this is. We give a total pass on Pakistan, who's making the, the third largest manufacturing facility for nuclear weapons in North Korea. And we know that North Korea could, with its uh, tubeless rocket systems, literally completely carpet South Korea. And South Korea is armed to the teeth with the most advanced nuclear weapons in history. Our weapons, we've salted all over South Korea. <clears throat> Within 20 minutes, South Korea could literally no longer exist. And they know this is a trigger for World War III. And the Chinese, of course, are totally enraged because they know this thing in Sendai, Japan, which I have new evidence now, and we had Dr. Professor McCanny on, <clears throat> he's almost certain that looking at the P waves and the other things, that this was a, a nuclear-triggered uh, tsunami, that there wasn't the typical P waves of an earthquake, an under-oceanic earthquake, and then, in fact, it was right after there was uh, threats that uh, from Israel that 
that Japan shouldn't be giving nuclear materials to Iran to build nuclear weapons. I guarantee you, not only does Iran have nuclear weapons, and not only does Pakistan have a whole lot, but so does Saudi Arabia. And my source is Avi Lipkin, who was an IDF for years, and actually gave me the satellite photos and the information as long as 13 years ago. So people need to understand the whole Middle East is a powder keg, and we're pushing the button and lighting, throwing cigarettes into, the, into a gasoline can. It's crazy. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, what do you think about North Korea? <clears throat> and the fact is that, oh, oh, gee, North Korea is developing new missiles. Uh, duh. And, of course, we don't make any representations to China say, this is your bad dog. you got to stop them from doing this. And we got to tell the Chinese, hey, you want to trade with us? you got to stop trying to be aggressive in the South China Sea. We're going to give you oil contracts and licenses, just like Obama gave a 60-mile off the Florida coast license to do oil exploration. What's the big deal here? Most of the oil goes to China already from Iraq. It doesn't come and pay for the war, like the lying senators told us they're going to pay for the war. Don't worry about the trillions of dollars it's going to cost them the dead American lives in order to treasure and blood in order to win the, the battle of Iraq, which is ridiculous. Uh, the oil, guess what? It's an oil war. goes to China. Is this crazy or not? It's totally for globalist ends. It's not for America's future or for even security of oil or energy. We are totally being abused and raped by these globalists and our so-called own leaders, Republican and Democrat. We need to get totally fed up with them. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. John, what's your recommendation? What do we do next? Uh, you mean as far as this show is concerned? As far as anything, I tell the first step is before you talk about secession, you need state banks, you need a U.S. reserve, and you need to get off the federal teat. And you need to basically tell Obama and the globalists and the district of criminals to go to hell. And you cannot secede until you have state banks and you have a federal reserve that is U.S., that there's no foreign bankers or banksters there, and that basically uh, that can be done in the next probably year or two. The states need to have their own state banks so they have their own credit because they've got to get off the federal teat. Once they do that, they can nullify any federal laws, including the National Defense Authorization Act, the authorization for 30,000 drones. And people don't realize it's not just airborne drones. It's killer robots. You know they're bringing back 26,000 killer robots, ground-based, that they can deploy in any American city or whatever. Do you want to have a sword that can give, do a headshot or hit you with a taser bolt with 100,000 volts? headshot of two and a half miles, do you? Do you want to have drones that can not only watch you, they can actually hit you, your uh, house and even pick up your Wi-Fi network and know your private conversations and put it in a database? I mean, people don't understand. We're entering the matrix, and people think that we're making this up. Oh, you people are so, you're psychotic. You need a shot, Doc. No, no, you need a shot in the side of the head with an open hand to say, look, I care for you <clears throat> if you don't smarten up. And their ignorance, by the way, is putting all of us in risk. Those people who are stupid enough to make comments to people like John Moore, Ann Morrison, Dr. Deagle, Alex Jones, and others, that are blowing the whistle on this, that we're crazy. No, you're viciously stupid, and you're putting us all at risk. It's like taking a hatchet to the bottom of the lifeboat and saying, don't worry, I can bail fast enough. Right. No, you can't bail fast enough. It's irritating, and I'm reach my limit of being Mr. Nice Doctor. I don't care what people think. I'm just going to tell them the truth, and I'm so so fed up after the election. The people that think it's okay, we're going to hit the fiscal cliff, like Krauthammer says. Let's walk to hell with Obama, to hell with discussion with this fool anymore. What do you think? Well, uh, I think we need to <clears throat> also advise people to take individual initiative to. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, prepare mm -hmm. spiritually and physically mm -hmm. for this. Exactly. That, in other words, the next step is if they don't have food, water, spiritual preparation, etc., because we're going to have problems. We're going to. We very well could have a bank holiday in January, February, or next year. Not because we need to have a bank holiday, but because they're playing a game. The game of chicken is not two guys with cars on a highway heading toward each other. We're the chickens. We're the chickens, and both the Republicans and the Democrats want to pluck us and cook us. We're the chickens. Uh, here, I'm going to read the first part of this paragraph of this article by Krauthammer. <clears throat> it's not just a bad deal. This is really an insulting deal. What uh, Geisner offered, what, what you showed on the screen, Robert E. Uh, Lee, was offered easier terms at a Potomax. Uh, 
uh, uh, Pomatox, uh, and then <clears throat> and also lost the Civil War. Democrats won by 3% of the vote, and they did not hold the House. Republicans won the House. So this is not exactly unconditional surrender, but that is what the administration is asking the Republicans. This idea, there are not only no cuts in this, there's an increase in spending with a new stimulus. I mean, this is almost unheard of. What do you do they expect? They obviously expect the Republicans will cave in on everything. I think the Republicans ought to simply walk away. The president is the president. He's the leader. They're demanding that the Republicans explain all the cuts that they want to make. We have that movie uh, a year and a half ago when Paul Ryan presented the budget, a serious real budget with real cuts. Obama was supposed to give uh, to give to uh, give speech where he would uh, respond with a counteroffer, and what did he do? He gave a speech where he and Ryan, sitting in the front row, he called uh, the Ryan proposal un-American, insulted him, offered nothing, and ran on uh, Medicare, which is what it is. It's Medicare uh, in the next 18 months. And they expect the Republicans are going to do this again. The Republicans are going to walk on this. So, in other words, I expect what it called the nightmare after Christmas. And this is all by design, by the way. It's going to be good for us. It's like having bad rigors at night when you finally throw off a pneumonia. If the Republicans walk on this, they're going to walk tall. They need to walk on it. Well, I hope they do. If they don't... All the Republic craps that haven't got a backbone need to get a backbone transplant. And I know that Bonner knows now from the internal, probably his own constituents, they've told him, if you cave on this, your political career is over no matter how much you cry, because he cries a lot. He'll have a reason to cry. Yep, he will. <clears throat> so I don't think so. I don't think the, you know, the I like this term, though, crowd however, he's pretty funny. Medi-scare, yeah. It's not Medicare. This is not cutting costs of frivolous lawsuits, drugs, and everything. This is Medicare. And guess what? Most employers now are cutting back hours. So they say, oh, we can only give you 25 hours a week. And you know why? Because if you're a full-time employee over 25 hours, we got to give you Medicare. we got to give you Obamacare, and we can't afford that. So we're only going to give you part-time. So now a lot of people are going to be unemployed, but they're going to be cut back in hours from 40 hours to 25 hours because then they can get Medicare. Isn't that disgusting? Well, it's guaranteed profits for the insurance and health and health industry. Well, yeah, more, more more customers, more doctors enslaved. And by the way, they're going to crush the healthcare industry, crush it beyond recognition. And we cannot tolerate another four years. We need to start the impeachment process for Obama. We need to make sure that uh, Joe Biden doesn't get in the position of being president. We need to make sure that Hillary Clinton is not in line because she is the evil witch of the West. And, uh, you know, even if you throw water on her, she won't be melting, melting. Uh, we have some real big problems coming. And the problems are, are all created by the globalists because they rule by scare tactics, the dialectics of evil. Just like the war in the Middle East, the economic scare tactics, there's no neat reason why America should have any problems with a balanced budget. None. Zero. Not at all. It's a crazy situation. And again, the same with rivers falling in there, and so they get over the barge traffic. And Obama wants to close the coal fired generators, <laughs> and then people are going. They don't even have Sandy fixed yet. All these people don't have homes. It's just crazy. They, and we call it. We should be embarrassed. No seawall around New York City. These politicians should be embarrassed that they didn't have a seawall. Oh, we'll never have a hurricane of that stature that'll flood the subways and destroy the city. They weren't just wrong. They knew damn well that it was going to happen. Uh, they just kind of kept on kicking the political football down the road until it blew up. Absolutely. And we're not ready for extreme weather or an American Fukushima, which is coming because these fools won't prepare for it. Thank you, John and Ann. Okay, we'll be back again you. Sunday Great evening, weekend. Encore, and next week, amazing shows. Don't miss it.